version of the BFS namespace and replication configuration. Uh, a big sorry to some of us who felt so bad about the song in the first video, so that is why we have to create this. Okay, so guys, please let's follow up. Here. All right, here we're about to configure the DFS namespace and replication. And when it comes to DFS, we have uh, two different types. We have the standalone based, and we have the domain based. The domain based is usually configured on on a, on, on a domain network, okay, which I'll be showing you right away. All right, and here I'm making good use of two servers, namely DC1 and DC2. DC1 is my domain controller, and DC2 will be a member server joined to the domain, okay, and made the replication server. So now in this case, to configure this as my DFS server, okay, I will have to install the DFS role, provided it's already my domain controller with the IP configurations and everything. Okay, so I'm just going to go for my uh, manage and add rules to add the DFS rules. We go for nest. We go for nest here, rule based nest. And here you come all the way down to the file and storage service. It's already installed, but not all these sub rules. Here you come to the DFS replication and um, namespace. Make sure you select both of them. DFS namespace and DFS replication and then you click on next and you click on next we're making this server a DFS namespace server okay and then from here we'll go for install okay I'm going to pause the video right now and then I'll get back when it's done okay guys I just finished installation so go to the tools click on close and go to the tools okay I already done that you see here we have a DFS management you click on that and then it pops up the DFS management console. Okay, as you can see, we have it here. Uh, let me enlarge that a little. And um, here we have namespaces and we have um, replication where we have not configured yet. So, what's going to happen now is right click on the namespaces because you're not configuring replication yet. Go to namespace, go to new namespace. Here you select the server that should host the namespace. The name of my server here is DC1. So in case you don't know your name of your server, the name of your server, or you can recollect the right spelling, go for the browse and go for advance and find now. You definitely see your server over here. So so I have here DC1. Okay, so we're gonna bring in that. Okay, go for next. And then here you type the name of the namespace. Okay, my namespace should be, uh, I want it to be Vincent um, Files. Okay, let me just use Vincent Tech Files. Alright, and then here you come for edit settings. You make sure you go for our administrators have full access and other users should have read and um, write permissions okay and then you go for okay and you go for next I'm creating a domain based as we talk, spoke about so you make sure you go for the domain based which this should be your namespace name okay that's my domain name vincentechblog.lab slash vincentechfiles so that will be my namespace so I'll go for next and I'll go for create so in this case I've successfully created my um, namespace and I'll go for close now here I have my namespace um, my namespace and every namespace you don't have a folder yet you have to create a folder first okay so right click and go for new folder Call that folder um, employees. Okay, employee folder. I'm not going to add any folder tag in it. I just want to create a folder and then go for OK. You can create as much, much as you want. Okay, so that is my folder in my 
namespace okay after doing this you can just go to run or you start and then you type the backslash backslash being sent tech blog dot lab backslash okay you can see that we have it so go for that enter you can see here we have our namespace created okay and we can access it now this namespace can be accessed anywhere or any pc that is part from any pc that is part of this network okay so now that is the namespace created so now in this case after creating the namespace okay we are done with the namespace the other namespace now the replication is all about having the same copy of the files on this my dc1 server on that server as well that's another server in this case i'm replicating the information to that other server okay and anything that's also created on that other server should be replicated to this server so in this case do these two servers becomes what we call replication partners so in this case before we start configuring the replication we need to make sure that the second server we'll be using is ready so let's switch over to our dc2 server like i mentioned earlier okay guys here we are on our dc2 server um here it's just a, a server machine with server os okay it needs to be part of the network that is part of the domain okay so what are we going to do we just have to join it to the domain basically because uh it's been given ip address and everything already by me so i'm just going to join it to the domain by just clicking on the web group here and um i'm going to change and um, click on the domain my domain name is vincent check blog dot lab dot lab so going to all right so basically i have to provide my credentials as a domain admin so going to do that right away and i should have a, a successful join so now i'm part of the domain okay so i will restart the system and log in okay as a domain admin to to to, to have um the administrative credentials to configure my replication partner successfully so because we need to install the um dfs namespace replication rule we just need to install the rule if necessary if not it won't work okay go for close and then close and then i'll restart this and get back to you shortly okay guys i'm back on the dc2 server um i'll log in as a domain admin to go back and um all the users and um and i'll just type vincent so vincent check blog backslash admin and um my domain admin password oops sorry password okay so I'm getting into the DC2 server now so this server is part of the, the domain I just need to install the, the rule that is the DFS namespace on the DFS replication role and um, to do that just have to wait up for the server manager and quickly restore the road so simple okay guys here i have my um dc27 i'm going to add rules and features on the nest and then uh um yeah nest and um nest come down here and um you go for the main page and um basically you just have to add the replication alone okay the namespace is not required here you just have to add the replication group nest and um nest and um 
to install. So after installing this here, we're just going to move on to a DC1. So when this finishes installation, I'll meet you up on the DC1 server. Okay, guys, you just finished installation. Okay, so let's move on to the DC1 to configure the application um, server. So I'll meet you on DC1. Okay, guys, now on DC1, right click on the the replication group or new replication group. Okay. We're using the multiple pools replication because it allows uh, replication between two or more servers. Okay, and um, um, that is this option configures replication between two or more servers for publication. Okay, and um, the group of data collection means that it's a two-way replication between two servers. Okay such as branch and a hub so we don't need that we're going to use a multi-purpose and then you name your replication group i'm going to call it vincent um files replication okay i can also um, describe that okay what i want and i have uh, my domain here that's the domain that you leave that and click next and then you add um, the replication group members as boot pieces that will be the replication servers. So I can type the name here, names here, but I'll go for advanced fine now. And these are the two servers. I'll highlight that and go for OK and OK. And I'll have my two servers here as two members in the replication group. So let's run a check on names if they are actually existing. So let's wait for that later, or it shouldn't take time. <coughs> All right, guys, you've seen both of them. Group nest, and here we're creating the pool mesh. Okay, topology. That is, each member replicates with all members of the replication group. Okay, so when this server, this one is having files, it replicates. At, okay to DC2 when DC2 is having the files work it to DC1 so in common all files will be in the namespace okay so we go for nest we want full bandwidth okay schedule we go for nest and you put a primary member DC1 is a primary member because that's why I created the namespace and the nest now here it says folder to replicate from DC1 so I'll go for add folder and then you come here to browse and you come to see TFS root. You see here we have Vincent here files. That is where, okay, our files, that's our namespace folder. So after click on that, go for OK. And um, go for the yeah, existing permissions and OK. And you go for next. Now, guys, on DC2, okay, we need to specify a local location on DC2 where this replication will be transferred to or where the replication will be targeting from DC1 so edit this and then you go for enable you enable it browse you see on C of DC2 we have none there so you have to create okay a new folder there let's call it Vincent Vincent files replication okay and um, you can see I have it here, so I'll go for OK. And um, we don't want to make it a read only, so we're going to check that. And go for OK. And it's enabled, so you go for Nest and create. Everything should be successfully created here. When it's done like this, it means you're done with your replication configuration, but you have some few things to do, so let's go ahead. So you close this. It says it's not begin now until it's picked up, so don't worry about that. Go for OK. Now, guys, when we come to the replication, which is here, the Vincent file replication, you can see it has been enabled on both DC1 okay, and DC2. And then we have your connections. Okay, we have sending member of DC1. Okay, so now when we right click on this, this is the sending member. This um, DC1, okay, sending member, and we have the membership here. We have a replication folder, it's not published yet. 
So what's going to happen is just right click on this and you go for replicate now. When you do that, you have a sending member, we have a receiving member. Okay, and then you go for OK. In this case, it says what? It has been resumed successfully. So now, guys, in this case, we have DC1 as our DFS server, and we have DC2 as a replication partner. So these two servers come together to host the files on your particular network. So any system at all that is part of your network can easily access the namespace. So from DC1, let's see, when we access the namespace, okay, you can see that we access this namespace, we can send check files, and we have, we can create some things here. Okay, let's create a new folder here. Um, um, okay, make a new folder here, and call it create, created from DC1. Okay, that's folder created from DC1. Okay, so let's close this. Let's move on to DC2. This is DC2. From DC2, if I go to run and type backslash backslash Vincent check blog dot lab backslash Vincent check files, I should see everything that you can see. These are files created from the um, uh, DC1. Okay, as you can see, let's from DC2 also create some folders and everything here. Let's go for create created from from DC2. Okay, let's create multiples. Let's create another one. Okay, new video. Okay, so we have this two created from DC1, DC2. Sorry, DC2 created from DC2. So every other system part of this network can come to this namespace and um, create files, and it will be a central storage for us. So these files created lie on this DC2 server, also on DC1 server. So in case DC1 is not functioning or it's down or DC2 it's down, our files can still be accessed because we have a replication um, partner or we have um, a supporting server. So now in this case, if you go back to DC1 and come over here, this is DC1 and um, go to run, recent check files, you can see we have everything in there from DC2 new video okay it's as simple as that guys okay it's as simple as that it's as simple as that guys okay so <coughs> this is a local path where it exists on this server okay so that is not really necessary because people will usually access that so just go to your namespace and put folders there files the information there all right guys so that's how DFS okay namespace and replication configuration is done. I'm very sorry, I believe the other video was a song in it. Okay, I believe you like this video, so I'm creating more actually. I have more created already, so I upload and then I believe you enjoyed. So, uh, if you like it, please give a, give a lot of likes to it. Like, okay, comment, share, um, just subscribe, subscribe to my channel for more. Okay, subscribe and thank you for watching. Bye.